For this video, we're going to understand film music form to be the degree to which it is in sync with the images on screen. If it's tightly in sync with what's happening on screen, it helps to give the audience an objective perspective. They are pulled into the world of the film. When the music is not in sync with the images, the audience can have a more subjective perspective. It creates a sense of mood. It pulls the audience out of the film. In this example, from the 2000 film Gladiator, the music is not in sync with what's going on. It's a slow elegy. It's making a commentary on the cost of battle. So there the music gives the audience a chance to reflect on what's going on on screen. And this is a fairly common film device uh, used probably most famously in the film Platoon with the use of Barber's Adagio over the sergeant's death. Okay, here's another example from the 2004 film Spider-Man. Here the music is tightly in sync with what's happening. It's following all the action. <laughs> So you can see that the music follows the action on screen very closely. Now it makes every punch, every jump, every leap that much more exciting. It's not just pulling you into the real, it's giving you the sense of the hyper real or the super real. These aren't just people, they're super people. And I'm going to show you a similar example from Back to the Future. Um, Marty is in the time machine being chased by the Libyans, and the music follows the action very closely. It ramps up and modulates as it goes from the cuts, follows all the sequence of the shots. Let's see if you bastards can do 90. It's a similar idea as Spider-Man. It's pulling you into it. You can really feel the excitement. So there's a tendency of the mind to want to group things together. That's the roots of gestalt psychology. The idea that different images can combine together, which we associate as a whole, such as a bunch of different lines in different directions creates a shape of a tree. And this same idea can be applied to the way that the mind understands speech and music, sound effects, and the image that it receives in film. Here's another example from Steven Spielberg's film Saving Private Ryan. The filmmakers want the audience to feel like they're part of the action. They want to have the experience of storming Omaha Beach. And there's no music used at all. And the camera work and the soundtrack reinforces this experience. But then Spielberg does a cool trick. He wants us not to be outside of the film and not to be part of one of the other soldiers, but actually to have the perspective of Tom Hanks' character. We want to be inside his head. And he does that with almost a single musical tone-like sound effect because silence is a very tricky thing to work with in film. Puts us, once again, changing perspective, but this time inside the character's head. Then as the battle ends, the camera pulls out and John Williams' score comes in, allowing the audience to reflect on what they've just seen, and providing a commentary on the atrocities of war. It's no surprise that the history of animation is one dictated of having the music in very close synchronization to the visuals. After all, it's a cartoon, and if it wants to really suck us into the drama, it's going to have to do more than just giving us a bunny rabbit.